too. All right, I got that settled. Now I'm gonna share my screen. There we go. Strategies for toilet training your child. I'm Helene. I'm um, a mental health specialist. I, this is just coming up on a year being here at the YMCA. Um, and I am here. Um, my background is applied behavior analysis. I've worked 20 years in public school and private schools as a behaviorist and learning coordinator. And, you know, my specialty is um, early childhood. So I'm here, I've trained a lot of children and I've worked with a lot of parents on um, toilet training their child. So hopefully I can share some of what I know with you to uh, help you through this process. So of course we wanna talk about like the physical readiness. Um, you know, that, that's, they might say like um, that they have to go or they might tell you they just went, um, you know, it, they don't have to have a elaborate language, whatever you, you know, use to call it that they're going, um, you know, if they say that, um, usually it's between 18 months and two years old, they start to like verbalize that or, you know, be aware of that. Um, I was starting to train at around 20 months. She was completely trained by two. It's going to vary. Um, and, and that's okay. It is, you know, um, often we'll see girls ready a little bit earlier than the boys. Um, but it's, there's so much variability, nothing to worry about. Um, but most children are usually ready to be trained between two and three. So, I know it seems like a long time, but during that time period, you want to try to get the training started. Now, if you think your child might have a developmental delay, they may need additional time. Um, and they also may need um, additional, um, additional ways in training, additional training uh, procedures. So if that's anyone here that you want me to cover that, um, just, you know, type that in the chat. But, you know, with a child with developmental delays, we might use more picture cues, a more regimented schedule, um, and maybe some additional reinforcers. So... Is your child physically ready? Well, you can see during nap time, is their diaper dry? That's a really good indicator that physically they can hold and, um, you know, they're getting ready for training. Now, also, of course, they should have no bowel movements on overnights if they're ready physically. Um, also, that there's regularity to the bad movements, like maybe they go every day, twice a day, like, you know, their schedule. Um, and that's another thing is like, they don't like being in a dirty diaper. They want it changed. You know, it's kind of like that awareness, um, you know, is another sign that they're ready physically. So... Developmental readiness. Beyond the physical, you know, you want to think about developmentally what their skills are because it takes a lot more than just going to the bathroom, right? Like there's steps involved. So following two step directions. And sometimes this is an issue of compliance, right? They don't want to listen. And, and, and that's something to consider. Um, but follows two step directions. Um, and so that could be like, get your shoes and your socks. You know, maybe you have them laying out by the table or by the chair and they know what they are. You know, simple things where, you know, they're listening and they can understand. The, so they have to have like receptive language with the intention to follow through. Um, you know, and then, of course, they have to be able to pull up and down pants 
when you are training, you want to be really um, mindful of like what kind of pants you use. I always recommend like sweatpants, like, you know, something really easy with like an elastic lace uh, because, you know, they're going to they're going to push it sometimes to that last minute if they have to go and you don't the last thing they want is like overalls and <laughs> those things that like button um, just, you know, that's where you're probably going to have more accidents. They have to be able to sit on the toilet. Um, you know, s- some kids could be scared of that, especially the larger toilets that we use as adults. So getting a little um, toilet, you know, that's what I did. And um, we started with that because it was nice and small, um, you know, less intimidating you can get with the character. So that's always a winner, right? Getting something cute that they like that, you know, whether it's Elmo, that was, you know, things that whatever it is that your kid's into. Um, or you can get, you know, the things that go on the seats, the portable ones that go on the big ones to make it a little smaller. And again, they have the characters that can make it a little more attractive. Um, verbal readiness to initiate that they need to go, right? That's a developmental skill. Um, they don't have to start with that though. Like I, I wouldn't um, say that's a prerequisite to tr- starting training because I think usually first it's kind of like scheduled, you know, you get them to go, but and you don't have to be verbal that I think and that's why I'm saying that because I've taught nonverbal children <laughs> to go, you know, they could have a picture out on the table um, as a little reminder and they can point to it. So I, it doesn't have to, they don't have to have a complete verbal initiation, but of course, um, even if they can imitate you saying, I need potty, you know, like that's something you should do when you start training. Um you know, when you are bringing them, you want to give that verbal model, I, you know, whatever you call it, I need the bathroom, I need potty. Um, they should be able to stay dry for up to two hours. And if they're not there yet, then it might be a little too early. So behavioral readiness. This is Generalized imitation skills. So that's just, you know, what whatever you ask them to do, like grab the paper, they grab the paper, flush the toilet, they can flush the toilet. So they can imitate whatever it is you're doing. Clap your hands, clap your hands. Like I'm not saying in the bathroom, but if they have really good imitation skills, then, you know, that's really a prerequisite to learning um, to to toilet train because there's a lot of steps in, you know, going to the bathroom. So they have to kind of, it's like a, a chain of events that they have to kind of remember the sequence. Right. And, you know, it is important that they are interested. So let them follow, you know, they're going to follow you into the bathroom anyway. I know mine always said, you know, and how they see, Oh, this is what mommy does. This is what daddy does. Uh, we go on the big toilet, right? Or the big potty. Um, that makes it a little bit interesting. So they know like, oh, this is what I do. I'm going to, I want to do what they do. You know, it helps uh, give it an, an area of interest. Um, if they're really scared, they're not ready, right? If they're really scared, you know, like you want to just definitely go with um, that smaller toilet first, you know, and, uh, you know, you could put it in a fun room, put it in the playroom and well, you know, do it there or something, do it, keep it close by. But, um, if the, you know, some kids do get scared and if the, if that's where they're at, I wouldn't, I would first work on like just desensitizing from that and be, and getting them okay with it. Um, cooperation with tasks. So, you know, I've worked through the years with a lot of children that, you know, might be a little um, non-compliance and, you know, not really cooperative, especially when it becomes a game, right? I'm not going to listen to you. (laughs) And if you're there, 
we all know the twos can be like that. Um, if you're, you know, if you're seeing a lot of um, non-compliance, a lot of tantrums, you know, you might want, it's best to wait because that you don't want to get into that battle around the toilet training, you know, rather work on getting more compliance with tasks first. Um, because non-compliance really is, you know, a power struggle. And if they're engaging in a lot of power struggles or challenging behavior, you know, it might be attention seeking behavior, you know, that's, you know, that's something to look at. But um, if you're engaging in that and have, and, and, and they're exhibiting that behavior, um, it's really going to make toilet training much harder. So it's best to try to work on toilet training once that the behaviors get a little bit better under control. And then having this emotional readiness. So they want to cooperate. They want to use the toilet, feeling proud of themselves for having success. You know, none of the non-compliance. That's when they're ready. Um, if they're still refusing and be like, no, I don't want to do it. Crying. If you have them go on, you know, they're not ready. They're not ready for it yet. And then the big question is always, are you ready? <laughs> Um, as a parent, you know, I, I know like, oh, we got to get out the door, got to run, you know, and keep on just trying to get on schedule, trying to get things done. It can be so much easier. Just put that pull up on and be like, yeah, I can't deal with this right now. Um, so it's like really a commitment you need, you know, when you decide you want to work on it, I always recommend that you know, you find a time when like, maybe there's a week off or you have a long weekend or something like that, uh, where, you know, you can like really dedicate yourself to being consistent about it. Of course, you want to make sure your child has, is showing those readiness, um, you know, skills. Um, so, but you want to, you want to be, you know, really ready um, at the same time, it, you know, you want to be committed. Um, you have to remember that you have to be consistent. So if you have a big project going on or you're planning some big thing and you're going to not be able to be accountable to that consistency, it's best to wait. Um, and then, you know, also you want to make sure that you don't have like rigid expectations, right? Like, I just want you to get this, <laughs> you know, just kind of being able to be showing up, being very present, being very consistent, yet allowing um, your child and their readiness to kind of have a piece of its own um, and being accepting of that. Um, the more, you know, eager that, we're, we are to um, have their success. You know, we don't want to put pressure on this, right? Just being open to the process and where they're at um, and kind of like reinforcing baby steps as they're, as they're coming along. Um, you know, you could, you could use a routine or a schedule. You can use, um, you know, start with like those books, um, you know, with the character. I know we had Elmo where the Elmo flushed the toilet, you know, practice by looking at the book and this, oh, this is what you do. That's like a nice thing to do first. Now, when it comes to, you know, following routine, so I'm just going to let someone in here. Um, when it comes to following routines, you know, you want to be consistent, like, okay, every morning when, when you just mute yourself, please, can, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Um, so every, you want to follow routines. So every morning when you wake up, you know, the first thing we're going to do is use the toilet. Um, maybe before we leave for school or ECLC, you know, we're going to try again before we get in the car. Um, same thing when we get home, 
you know, you want to be like really consistent with your routines of using the bathroom um, so that it becomes like a habit. So creating those healthy toileting routines, right? So here are some ideas. There may be different ones that work for your family. When you wake up, bef um, before they go to bed, before you leave the house, before a bath, you know, if you want to do a very vigorous schedule, like you have some time, you could do every 30 minutes or every hour, um, you know, if say you have the, the time on the weekend. Um, you know, that's when you're really starting to commit, right? Um, when, when they're out of the pull up, <laughs> you want to keep it like on a high rate that they're going, um, you know, and then getting those initiations. If they initiate, you want to honor that right away. Not like, give me a minute and I'll help you. Like if they initiate, you want to kind of try to, as they're learning this, drop everything and support them with it. Um, you know, once, once you're committed to train them, put it, put them in an underwear, uh, you know, we're at ECLC, that's what they're doing. They're bringing them to the bathroom. So, um, I'm, you know, I'm not sure the grade, if you're in the twos or threes class here, uh, threes are definitely training, um, twos, you know, you can start it, you can start it at home, right? You can start at home. Creating a safe space. This is really important. Just being really encouraging and positive, providing a lot of positive praise. Refrain from like negative talk or like showing you're disappointed if they have an accident. Just like kind of brush it off. Like, that's okay. You can try again later. Let's get some new underwear. You know, accidents happen. Um, you know, not making a big deal out of that. Um, just being accepting and encouraging. Again, avoiding the power struggles. If you start to see, you know, um, your child engaging in power struggles around when you start to toilet train, I would say, you know what, back off a little, give it a few weeks and then try again. Um, because you really don't want to, you know, engage in the power struggles. It, it will make it much harder um, and you know, you don't, that just shows they're not ready behaviorally. Um, and just showing up compassionately towards any hesitancy or fear, you know, um, around fear, you know, having them see you, you know, be like, it's okay. You know, um, trying the smaller toilet, um, or the character one that can go on top of the larger toilet. Again, the cartoon books are always helpful. Um, you could even make your own book, uh, you know, take pictures of um, your house and, you know, all of that and make a little story uh, with your child in it um, just so that they understand the routine, you know, what they, what they, a uh, sequence of events, you know, you have to pull down your pants, you have to get onto the potty, you have to urinate in the toilet, and then you get wipe yourself and pull up your pants, pull up your underwear, flush the toilet, wash your hands, you know, kind of reminding them of what the, what they need to do. So you could do it with books, you could make your own little book, um, just to show them what it's going to be that could um, alleviate some of the fear and hesitancy that they know what's coming, you know, um, you know, and you can do that by making it yourself. You want to, um, I don't like to, you know, have a lot of toys and stuff, uh, in the bathroom when they're toilet training. I like to try to keep it clear. I'm not a, a fan of like letting them have toys or books while they're on the toilet either. I think it's best to try to, you know, if you want to do the potty book, do it before you go in there. 
but try to keep it, you know, free from clutter, like a quick experience. So you go on, you go to the bathroom and you get off, right? Um, you know, so I, I tend to recommend not having the toys in the bathroom and just keeping it free from clutter. You can use a fun soap that they can look forward to washing their hands with. Again, the special potty chair um, and the books, making it part of your routine. Okay, I'm going to stop the share and stop the recording.